And welcome in everyone to Reckham 247.com. I'm Zach Long. This is Daniel Pauling and we continue our look at the Texas Tech recruiting situation as we quickly approach the all important February National Signing Day. Last week, Daniel, we got into the offense, so we promised them the defense this week. Let's get right into it. What is in the cupboard, so to speak, right now for the Red Raiders? Yeah, let's take a quick look at what Texas Tech already has uh, defensive commits wise. Everyone knows four star Braden Fajoko. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury is actually going to be there Thursday night. He's going to get to experience the whole Polynesian culture. I imagine on food, dance, all that good stuff. So he'll, he'll get to experience that. Um, Fajoko offers everywhere, you know, a great prospect. Devontae Hinton, inside linebacker, was an all-state guy. This guy just makes tackles. He's put, racked up a ton of tackles. I know Texas Tech could probably use yes, that. Yes, they could. <laughs> so he, he was a pretty, good, a, pretty bit, a pretty good commit for Texas Tech. Had offers from Houston, TCU, UTSA. And then it kind of gets a little bit down after that. Uh, they're getting uh, Courtney Wallace, three-star defensive tackle outside of, or out of Louisiana. And they're getting three-star Broderick Washington, who is actually rated as an offensive center. He's playing tackle right now, switching to defensive tackle. Both of those guys have the size, uh, 309 pounds for Courtney Wallace, six foot two. Broderick Washington, six foot two, 290. So those guys, you can project their bodies to say, okay, these guys can handle right. playing along the defensive line. But maybe their best offers weren't that good. Uh, Wallace's best offer, Central Arkansas, Louisiana Tech, South Florida. Uh, Broderick Washington, Houston, North Texas, UTSA. Those are fine programs, but Texas Tech is the only Power 5 school to offer those guys. Right. So if you're taking a little bit, I think you may be taking a little bit of a gamble there. It's, it just, this is, hey, what is what does Texas Tech see? What does Kevin or what is you know the the defensive coaches see in these guys? Can they make their transition to college successful? Yeah, because they're sure as hell a lot smarter than we are. So <laughs> maybe the other programs are just overlooking these kids, and hopefully you take a diamond in the rough and turns out to be a contributor for the Red Raiders. But that is where it stands right now on the kids that you're fairly confident. Fahoko, of course, has already signed. Mm -hmm. He'll be here in a few weeks. And the other kids you're fairly confident on. Let's go through some of the other positions of their targets remaining with about a little over a month and a half away from that signing day. Let's start at defensive end. Defensive end. Let's start with uh, Arden Key. He's a four-star guy, six foot five, two hundred and thirty pounds. He's the number six defensive end in the country. He's committed to South Carolina. Unfortunately for Tech fans, he told me this morning he's probably not going to have time to make his official visit out here. He's got official visits scheduled South Carolina, uh, LSU, UGA, Miami. I didn't think Tech would probably be able to compete with those guys anyway. Goodness gracious. Uh, Tech hasn't been out there to visit him. I don't know if they plan to you know, send a coach out there to see him to kind of persuade him to keep thinking about Tech. So it doesn't look good on that front to be able to flip him. Um, I think three-star Reggie Walker, six foot three, two hundred and thirty pounds, number twenty-seven guy uh, in the country at his position. I think that's a very good possibility for Texas Tech. He's making an official to Kansas State January sixteenth, making an official to Arkansas January twenty-third. Those are the other two schools in his top three. So I definitely think Tech has a good chance right there. And the third defensive end target, two-star Lonzel Gilmore. Kevin Curtis has been on this guy all season, six foot three, two hundred twenty. Uh, pounder out of Houston, number 98 defensive tackle or defensive end, excuse me, in the country. He's making an official visit to Nevada this weekend, uh, going to Texas Tech January 16th. Not set in stone, but I think he's going to be going to Kansas State January 23rd. Those are his. Uh, he he named his top six a couple of weeks ago. Uh, if you're making official visits, I think it's fair to say those are your top three. I don't think he plans to make any more official visits after that. Uh, just judging from that, I think Tech has a good chance of landing one of those guys, um, Walker or Gilmore. So Tech fans can, can I think it's probably 50-50 on one of those guys, but uh, I think one of those guys. They definitely could use the tech. speed from the outside, couldn't they? Mm -hmm. Into the inside, Daniel, a defensive tackle. Yeah, uh, four-star Joseph Wicker, six foot two, 265-pounder, uh, number 15 player at his position. He named Texas Tech to his top five along with Arizona State, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, and UCLA. Made his official visit out here, enjoyed it, but now those top four and his top four, Texas Tech is not. So I think Tech is probably out of the running on him. Uh, probably look to him to go maybe to Arizona State or UCLA. I think those are the top two choices for him. Uh, Jerry and Daniels, Cliff Kingsbury had an uh, in-school visit with him Tuesday of this week. I think Texas Tech is going to land him. Baylor's making some noise. Oklahoma's making some noise. But I think Texas Tech is going to be the favorite to land him. Six foot three, 290 pounder, number 21 guy in the country at his position. His dad played at Texas Tech. Everyone remembers Tony Daniels, perhaps, uh, you know, a solid, solid contributor to the team. 
So uh, I think uh, those are two a, le big a legacy kid you would hope would sign on the dotted line, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Daniel, the linebacker position, heavily criticized this year for Texas Tech. They lose some kids there as well. This is a very important position for them, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and unfortunately for them, they're I think they're only really in on one guy. They may, someone else may pop up later. Uh, I think you know we can't forget Mike Mitchell. Uh, he spent a year here yeah. after transferring from Ohio State. So he spent a year at Ohio State. I'm sure he's you know, had a, access to a great strength and conditioning program, great coaching up there. Came down to Texas Tech for a year, had a year to learn the system, uh, perform well, uh, stay in shape. So I think he'll be a solid contributor at inside linebacker for Texas Tech next year. But Arthur McGinnis is the guy that Texas, lo uh, Texas Tech is looking at an outside linebacker. Three-star recruit out of Warren Easton High School where, yes, five-star wide receiver Tyron Johnson goes. Uh, named Texas Tech to his top five along with Arizona OU Tech. UGA, uh, so it, it are, are within, and just those schools he's planning to make official visits to, uh, especially the first three, Arizona, OU, and Tech. So it, it kind of remains to be seen, you know, where he's going to go. Tech is, is definitely up there for him. Uh, we'll see if, if he makes a official visits also to UGA, Mississippi State, and Tennessee. Those are the other two schools he's considering for those last two visits. Uh, so you probably have to consider Tech at least maybe his top three. And, and those three schools are probably a little bit ahead of the others. Wouldn't that just make for a heck of a Christmas? You get that twofer <laughs> out of that school in Louisiana. Tyron Johnson and that young man, I think tech coaches might be uh, booming for a few weeks, shouldn't they? Yeah. All right, on to the defensive backs, Daniel. Texas Tech, one of the youngest units in the country this year. You know, a kid might look at that and say, oh, there's no chance for me to play there, or they can say, hey, they're young. I can come in there and beat out one of those guys. Absolutely, and, and Tech's only going to think, I think they're only going to get about three defensive backs in this class, probably two safeties and a cornerback. I don't know where they're getting the cornerback <laughs> from right now. I don't think they're close on any kids, so maybe they're looking at an, an athlete, flip them over to cornerback. Uh, obviously, I think the big name right now is Kahil Houghton. He's going to be making his decision in the next little while. Four-star safety, number 18 at his, at his position. I think it's between essentially OU and Baylor right now. I've predicted he's going to go to OU, but Baylor's been getting a lot of love from him recently. Uh, we'll see if he stays in Waco. Uh, so, you know, if he wants to stay at home or if he wants to go up to Norman. Yeah, sometimes that's tough for a kid. They've been there their whole life and just do not want to go to college there, and it's mm -hmm. nothing against the program in town. They just want something different. Right. Uh, Three-star safety Christian Taylor. I think that he's going to commit to Texas Tech. Six foot one, 181 pounder, number 105 safety in the country out of Houston. Uh, Tech and Baylor are in his top two. Baylor hasn't offered. I think that that firmly puts Texas Tech uh, as his number one choice. And I think uh, he's going to be committing sometime in the next couple of weeks. So it might be a pre-Christmas present for Tech fans right there. Absolutely. And speaking of this Christmas time, Daniel, why they got to stay locked into you here? Tech's not going to a bowl, which I'm sure everyone's well aware of now. But what does that mean? Their coaches are able to be free will right now in recruiting. Mm -hmm. And you've been showing me stuff throughout the week. They are literally everywhere right now, aren't they? Yeah, uh, they took a visit to see Darian Jackson. He's another safety that I was uh, kind of talking about. He named Texas Tech to his top four with K-State, KU, and Boise State. He's making a, an official visit this weekend to Boise State. Plans to come to Texas Tech January 16th. He plans to make his commitment right after his Texas Tech visit, visit, which I guess bodes well for Texas Tech. Hopefully, you would think. <laughs> that, that'll be the last school they'll see, or that'll be the last school he'll see. Uh, Tech's also, this was kind of interesting on Wednesday, the uh, infamous uh, uh, Eric Morris uh, FaceTime photo that you know a lot of fans are kind of looked at and said, wow, uh, is that really Eric hey, you got to recruit, man. you got to recruit. <laughs> yep. If that's the way you get it done, that's the way you get it done. Eric, Erico Evans, 6'1", uh, 190-pounder. He really came out of nowhere. Uh, KU, Indiana, TCU, Tech have all offered within the last 10 days. He's finally getting that, you know, Power Five interest. He played quarterback and safety this year, but Tech's recruiting him as a safety. Uh, 2,300 total yards. First time uh, Tech talked to him was Wednesday morning when Morris came by his school. Tech offered him a couple of hours later. Uh, named Texas Tech to his top five along with a bunch of other schools. I think it's kind of a, a rush for him right now to get so many big offers, especially when you thought, hey, you know, maybe I'm going here or, or going here, and then a bunch of Big 12 schools come calling. So maybe a little bit of a rush. Maybe he needs some time to kind of determine things out. Brandon Scott, three-star safety out of Louisiana. A l uh, kind of lost touch with him. He hasn't, uh, you know, done too much recently. He's been getting a lot of offers, Georgia Tech, uh, Arizona State's offered. So he's gotten, you know, several good programs. Six-foot, 
190 pounder, number 52 safety in the country. I think Tech has a good chance of getting him, uh, but you know we'll see as the uh, season kind of progresses. And it's tough on these kids right now, isn't it? Some of them, I've seen a lot of kids tweet out in the last week and a half, they've just shut it down. Mm -hmm. They said, we're not going to talk to anyone, we're not going to listen to anyone, because they just need a few weeks to think, because it is a big decision, isn't it? And you can't imagine what that's like, especially the young man you just mentioned. When they come hot like that real fast, can you imagine his phone right now? <laughs> and the calls that those people are getting, but that's all the more reason to stay locked into you, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, Daniel stays hard at work all the time. Stuff is going to really progress over the next few weeks, folks. So please go to Reckham247.com, buy a subscription, follow Daniel on Twitter. That's the feeder into the website. Everything he does is going to be on there. For now, though, that is our look at the defensive prospects for Texas Tech. We'll be back with you here in a matter of days to give you an update on where the Red Raiders signing class is headed. For now, though, we're going to bid you farewell. That's Daniel Pauling. I'm Zach Long, and you're on Reckham247.com.